Hello guys, I am back from another video and today we talk about what if Deku was reincarnated into Genshin Impact. So in the last video we talked about how after arriving back home from, you know, his old encounter with the Asiora in the forest while he was going back to, you know, to where the rebellion is still happening, or more specifically where the, you know, rebels are currently staying at, he would see Kazuha and Lumid, and Lumid and Kazuha seem to be more damaged than the rest. I mean, both of them seem to be quite damaged, except for, you know, the others, which, you know, seem to be just normal. After, you know, telling them about what happened, you know, they were pretty worried until, you know, well, she would explain what happened to them. Apparently, they decided to try and, you know, stop La Senora, but, you know, not La Senora, I meant, you know, stop Raiden Shogun. And during the fight, you know, they sort of had to, you know, you know, use a lot of their energy, including Kaza, which, by the way, he used his, you know, best friend's vision, which, let's just say, was pretty strong. But it was a pretty short, you know, time period before, you know, it's just gone. Like, the light is completely gone. So, after duking it out with several of the, you know, members of, you know, of, you know, Kujisaro's gang, they would basically leave without, you know, any casualties. I mean, technically some of them were injured, but not as injured as, you know, as, let's just say, Lumine. I mean, Lumine is not really that damaged, but still. So. After, you know, a bit of talking, it's about, like, you know, a few weeks later. As Bell, not Bell, I meant Izuku. As Izuku basically, you know, flies off into the sky, thanks to the help of the, you know, a Geo and, you know, Animal Dragon, he would arrive back in the village, or the blacksmithing village, that he, or, you know, you know, the blacksmith that he basically, you know, you know, ordered for him, like, ordered, you know, that he basically ordered to make a, you know, a brand new weapon for himself. Which, in this case, were two sides. Which, you know, had a, a Chinese Dao type of like thing, which is similar to a Kasami Gama. But except, instead of being connected with, you know, one chain, they're just, you know, two, you know, I guess you could say, you know, ropes, or I guess you could say furs. Basically, you know, not really connected, but more or less, you know, act as like, you know, I guess you could say, like, similar to nunchucks, basically. So, after arriving there, and would see that this, you know, large village, or at least sort of large village, seems to be having a party. After, you know, a bit of, you know, walking around and seeing Ito and his gang basically having a bit of fun, he would arrive at the blacksmith and would get his weapons, and after a bit of bribing, because, you know, one of them was, you know, or more specifically the girl was planning to, you know, tell, you know, Kuchisara about it, and maybe, of, you know, maybe the guards, but Izuku... Thanks to the help of Mora, yes, <laughs> and would basically, you know, bribe her into not telling them. So, after leaving, he would basically go into an alleyway to basically, you know, you know, you know, try out his weapons, but not that way, as, you know, literally killing a civilian. Not unlike those, you know, you know, samurais that would do that. That's true, apparently, you know, apparently back in the day, samurais would actually do that, and by the way, trust me, Summarized in actual, you know, in actual history, they aren't that good. And, by the way, they just, apparently they're much more loyal than, you know, Samurais. Which, you know, surprised me a little bit. I mean, it does make sense. I mean, yeah. A anyway, continue on with the video, or in this case, the explanation about what happened last episode. He would see, you know, Kujasara being attacked by a few men that are planning to... Let's just say, unconsensually, you know, you know, fornicate with her. So, after arriving there and would basically, you know, fight them off, and thankfully saving Kujasara, Kujasara would basically thank him, and they would make a deal. Because, you know, Izuku's here, and she can obviously report this, you know, you know, you know, to her, aka, you know, Miss Raiden Shogun over there, Izuku would decide to, you know, make a deal with her. And so, after, you know, doing that, but before he can actually leave, she would basically tell Belle to basically, not Belle, I meant Izuku, to come closer to her. And after doing that, she would basically kiss him. So after doing that, they would basically leave. Or at least he, in this case. So after arriving back home, apparently he has to go to a little meeting with the rest of the, you know, rebellion. After arriving at the rebellion's, you know, large ass, you know, building, and would see Kakomi making a plan about their final assault on the, you know, 
on the capital of Inazuma to basically stop, you know, and finally defeat, you know, Raiden Shogun. And so, they would basically, you know, rest for today, because tomorrow is going to be a pretty big day. After all, the rebellion is about to truly start. So yeah, so that's the explanation about what happened last episode. And so, let's talk about what happens next day. So, as everybody is basically waking up, maybe about like, oh, I don't know, 4 in the morning, which... By the way, it's pretty much normal for me because I'm currently because I'm literally living with my you know grandmother. Don't ask. Uh, let's just say I have you know sort of family. Uh, let's just not talk about that. Um, basically, you know, I prefer to just live here. And besides, I got Wi-Fi, and that's how I'm you know making videos here. So obviously, I decided to live here for obvious reasons. So. As, you know, he's basically waking up pretty early in the morning so they can prepare for the plan, you know, Yoimiya would basically grab a lot, and I mean a lot of fireworks. And not only that, those fireworks are probably gonna be about the size of how Hiroshima happened. Yeah, but thankfully it's gonna be in the sky and not, you know, in the ground. Oh boy. <laughs> so, as she's basically getting ready all of the, you know, pyrotechnics, Sayu is currently, you know, scouting out the area. After reporting back to, you know, you know, to Kakome, Kakome would basically explain their whole plan. She would say, Alright guys, we're gonna be going over here, as they would point at a little, like, area near the coast of, you know, Inazuma. More specifically, you know, a little beach area, almost similar to, you know, um, what is that called? Similar to Normandy. <laughs> Normandy is the... <laughs> I, you, you cannot stop. You, that damn joke. Oh, I remember that stupid joke back in class. God fucking damn it. I can't believe I actually got... Oh, anyway, continuing on with the episode. As she's basically, you know, explaining the whole plan. As she reaches towards Izuku and the rest of the main group. As she would say this. So, Izuku... And for you, mean you're gonna be going over here to this route. As she would point at a little area that's near, you know, the forest. As she would basically explain that they should go around this route so they can, you know, reach toward the, you know, large ass castle of, you know, Raiden Shogun. So they can try and fight her. After saying all of this, you know, she would say this, specifically Elmin. So is there gonna be any enemy trouble or as she would say this? Probably, but there's a reason why I decided to go for you two. I mean, both of you are pretty much powerhouses. As Izuku would say this. Well, you're not wrong. After saying this, she would say, Yeah. <laughs> After laughing a little bit, she would say, Now, as everybody's preparing, you know, um, let's just say Izuku is currently, you know, you know, trying out this brand new weapon, specifically Hellfire. Which are these, yeah. So, as he's trying out Hellfire, which is the name of his sides, he would basically start creating light, you know, literal flaming slashes at the air. Literally, you know, thanks to the help of the, you know, you know, thanks to the help of the air basically, you know, being pushed into the fire, well, thanks to the oxygen in the air, well, it's basically burning the fire even more and making it extra stronger. And it's not helping that he has Animo, which, let's just say, that combination would be terrifying. So, as after, you know, a while basically, you know, trying this out, Izuki would say this. So, we're gonna be having our final fight with Raiden Shogun. I just hope we don't lose. I don't want to be fricked by her, he would basically start to think. As he would start to remember her whole speech. Remember that whole speech about saying that she's going to marry Izuku Midoriya? Yeah. He doesn't want that at all. I mean, I mean, you've... I mean, all of you guys decided for Raiden to be a part of the ship, or at least in Izuku's harem, so... I mean, I'm not complaining, but Izuku, in his case, well, he's pretty much complaining all the time. <laughs> I mean, he's pretty much complaining about it, because, you know, he doesn't really want to marry her. Not because she's, you know, beautiful or anything of that sort. It's because, you know, she, like, he doesn't know her all that much, so... Yeah, anyway, continuing on with the video. So, as, you know, he's basically, you know, trying out his, you know... His Hellfire sides, he would look over and would see Lumine. As Lumine would say this, Hey Bell, 
I met Bell, I met Izuku. As she would say this, so Izuku, what are you doing? As you would say this, oh, trying out my Hellfire sides. After, you know, putting them on a little, like, you know, um, just imagine two holsters over here on his sides. It's basically being covered by his, you know, um, you know, sort of like jacket type thing. As, after saying this, she would say, oh, cool, then we should probably go now. It's finally time for us to go. As she would say that, as Izuku would start to follow her. So, as Izuku is basically following her, he would arrive at the, you know, large ass, you know, you know, a large ass, you know, I guess you could say like, you know, battalion of soldiers getting ready to fight. As Kikomi would basically bring in a large speed saying that she's going to, you know, that she's going to change Inazuma for the better and would basically stop the tyranny of, you know, of Raiden Shogun. After that, they would start to leave going into action. So as everybody's basically going off into different directions, Izuku would start, you know, following. So, as, you know, they're basically getting ready to go, you know, you know, after she's basically, you know, telling about her speech, I meant, she would basically say that she's going to, you know, save Inazuma from, you know, from the reign of tyranny that, you know, you know, uh, Raiden Shogun has basically, you know, forced upon Inazuma as blah blah blah, sort of that thing, and every single soldier would start to leave. Um, not really soldier, but more like, you know, rebels. As for Izuku and Lumine, they would start leaving, going into the direction, or at least the, you know, location where they're gonna be, you know, doing their whole thing. As, you know, it's currently, you know, about 5 o'clock in the morning, several, you know, you know, members of Kujasara's army are currently just, like, sleeping. Until they hear the large explosions, which are coming from, you know, a nearby island, like, near Inazuma, like, you know, a few blocks away. As the soldiers are basically, you know, getting ready, Kujasara would basically tell everybody to start going towards that place immediately. Unbeknownst to them, it was a distraction. Thanks to the help of a certain, you know, Yoimiya over there. Yomiya is currently, you know, activated the, you know, the large ass, you know, the large ass explosives, and she would start to leave the island at top speed. Thanks to the help of Sayu, basically, being forced to become a little boner. <laughs> Just imagine her, like, dash, like, from The Incredibles, like, in the first movie. Just imagine her, just like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, basically that. So, as currently with, you know, Izuku and, you know, Mabin, they're currently running off towards their, you know, for, you know, their, you know, assigned location, which is, you know, nearby the, you know, castle of Raiden Shogun. As they're arriving there, they would see a few members of, you know, you know, a few members of the rebellion, including some members of Kujasara's gang and some, you know, you know, um, guards from, you know, the actual castle itself. As Izuku would basically say, Hey, Lumin! As Lumin would say this, Um, what is it? As Izuku would say this, You better hold on! As Izuku would basically start to, you know, create something from the ground. As a large dragon made out of, you know, Geo Energy, as it's being helped by, you know, by some animal energy basically making it fly. And so they would start to fly off immediately, taking off like a, you know, um, just imagine how that dragon, I can't remember the actual name of that dragon specifically, but it's the dragon that literally has, you know, engines for wings. Yeah, that one. I can't remember the actual name of it, but damn, it's cool. So, as they're basically flying off at top speeds, they would land down at, you know, the castle of, you know, of her, aka, you know, you know, you know, Raiden Shogun. As they would basically jump off of the large dragon, as the dragon would basically dissipate. As they would start, you know, start walking, you know, walking up the stairs, they would see a few members of, you know, the guard basically there, basically just like, you know, obviously guarding, you know, Raiden Shogun's, you know, sacred place. As you see this, I'm sorry, but we're not allowing you to get near Raiden Shogun. As one of them would say this, wait, that's the target. As one of them would say this. It seems so. Maybe if we capture him, we can get the reward from Raiden Shogun herself. As they would start, you know, pointing their weapons at them, or more specifically at Izuku, as you'd say this. I'm sorry, but I've already been taken. And besides, I'm not really interested in her. 
after saying this, you would basically start pointing his, you know, blade of tempest or the blade or the tempest blade towards them, as you would say, now, siren song. After saying that, a large beam of water would basically appear, as the beam of water would start to split into multiple, I meant multiple, turning into almost like thousands upon thousands of, you know, dragon-like heads towards them as they would be slamming towards them at full speed, causing them to, you know, to fall to the ground. As you could say this, it will mean, as the mean would say this, yeah, we you know, I mean, I know. And so they would start going into the castle, nearby. So, nearby was a girl, a girl that seems to be wearing a shrine, you know, a shrine beaten outfit. And she seems to have, you know, fox-like ears and a fox-like tail. As she would say this. Oh, so that must be the Traveler and Izuku of the Thousand Elements. How interesting, she would say. As after saying this, she would say, uh, I guess I would just have to make a deal with her. Or should I say with the two of them? To make sure that they won't get killed. And so, she would start to leave. As one of them, specifically a, you know, another shy maid, would say this. Um, yes, Yomiya. Not Yomiya, I meant. I meant Miss Moika. I meant Miss, you know, Miss, um, Moika. Why? Why exactly? As you say this. Well, they're certainly quite powerful, and I don't really want them to die. Especially the boy with his multiple elements. And uh, I wouldn't want to disappoint Miss, you know, Raiden Shogun if he were to actually die. As, you know, she would say this. But still, I mean, shouldn't we just, as she would say this, as she would basically yield up, you know, her, you know, I guess you could say wand, I don't really know what to call it. It's basically like that thing that they would use, you know, to basically, you know, pray to gods in Shinto mythology. I can't remember the actual name of it. It's basically a snack with, you know, with several folded, you know, paper, or was it cloth? I don't really know what the material is, but either way, it looks like that. I should say, sorry, but I wouldn't want you to do that. Anyway, we should, you know, probably start to leave. And so they would start to leave, leaving, you know, you know, a pretty empty place. And, and nearby were a few battered and bloody members of, you know, Raiden Shogun's, you know, army. Currently bloodied and battered, almost like they're, you know, literally like living in hell right now. So, currently back with Izuku and Lumine. As they're currently, you know, um, currently going around basically, you know, taking down several members of their, you know, specifically several members of, you know, of Raiden Shogun's, you know, army, they would arrive at a pretty large room. As Izuku see this. Well, this room is really is interesting, he would say, as she would say this, yeah, but I don't really feel like some, I feel like something's gonna happen, something terrifying, as she, as she would say this, they would see a member, or more specifically, you know, a person of, you know, of serious, and I mean seriously looks familiar. This person seems to have ginger-like hair and wearing a grey suit and a red scarf. As you would say this. Ah, oh, comrades, it's been a while. After saying this, Izuku would say this. Wait, you! As you would basically whip up his weapon as you would say this. Oh, um, sorry, but I'm no way not gonna fight you. Besides, I'm not really here to fight. It's more or less a, you know, a warning. He would say, as Izuku would say this. What do you want, Tartaglia, or should I say Childe? As you would say this. Ah, uh, don't worry, we're not enemies. I mean, besides, we're comrades. Sort of, at least. He would say. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm here because I wanted to warn you. And trust me, it is a pretty good warning. As after saying this, he would say this. Um, yeah. What is it? He would basically say, clutching his weapon in case if he were to attack. Or specifically, you know, I'm just going to be calling this, you know, the Blade of Gaia for now. This one. After, you know, saying this, you would say, so what do you want? As you would say, well, um, the reason why I wanted to talk to you and tell you this morning is because, you know, let's just say La Senora certainly become, how do I call, 
Um, what is that term exactly? It's called like Yon something. As you could say this. Please don't tell me it's Yandere. As you'd say, ah yes, it's called um Yandere, you think? As you'd say, crap, you would basically think in his mind. As you would say this. Well, more specifically, he's, you know, she's sort of Yande, whatever the hell it's called, you know, towards you. As you would say this. Oh god. And let's just say she sort of became insane, to say the least. So, better be careful, especially you, you know, Lamine. As you would say this. Why exactly? As you would say this. Well, because you're with YN most of the time, well, you know, let's just say she's definitely gonna target you mostly. As after hearing this, she would say, Okay, this is certainly gonna be annoying to deal with. As both of them would start thinking their minds. As she would say this. Anyway, um, I should be going. Besides, it's not really my time to fight. At all. And besides, I'm currently on another job, so bye! You would basically start to leave as Izuku would say this. Wait, wait! But before he can, he's gone. As you'd think, God fucking damn it! After saying this, Lumi would say this. Um, Izuku, we should probably go now. And so they would open the large, you know, Tori door. I think it was called that. Um, it's basically the sliding door that Japanese people would have, like made out of, like cloth or paper, was it? I can't remember. But either way, they would walk in and would see La Senora. La Senora was currently right beside. Raiden Shogun. As Raiden would say this. Ah, uh, Izuku of the Thousand Elements and you, she would say. As after saying this, La Senora would say this. Ah, uh, my Rostam, it's been a while. So you clearly came here for me, right? She would say, as Izuku would say this. Heaven so! I'm here just for, you know, Raiden Shogun so I can take her down. Besides, your reign of tyranny is over, he would basically say. As, after saying this, she would say, uh, Do you seriously don't think of me as anything else than a tyrant? I'm saving the world. Saving the world from something similar to the great collapse, she would say. As he could say this. But I don't care, you're basically causing a lot of chaos at this point. You would basically say, as she would say this. Uh, you don't really understand it, Ot. Oh, she would say. And you... Lumine. Lumine of the Golden Sword. I will make sure to rip your vision off your hands, and make sure that you'll be thrown in a dungeon. After saying this, you know, La Signora would be there, still be looking at Bell. I'm at Bell, I'm at Izuku! As Izuku would say this. Anyway, so, I wanted to ask you this. Do you really want to fight us? Do you really want to fight us, Miss, you know, Raiden Shogun? As she would say this. If I have to, yes. But before she could say anything else, a, you know, a person would basically appear. In this case, La Signora herself. As she would say this. I can't take it anymore. Bell. Not Bell, I meant easy. <laughs> oh no, god damn it. Oh, it's basically like, uh Great, it's in reverse. Anyway, so, as on the, like, last year would basically say this. Izuku, or should I say Rostam, come to me and be with me. As after saying this, Izuku would say this. Oh, heavens no! As after saying this, she would say, you'll learn to love it. You'll learn to love me. Just like back then, she would basically say, as her arm would start to, you know, be covered in, you know, you know, wait, there's... As she would start covering her hand in cryo energy, as she would say this. If you don't want me to bring you to just I am by, you know, by just like, you know, basically saying that if she can't, you know, take Belle to, you know, to Shesnaya, with, you know, with just, you know, by convincing him, she would say this as well. Guess I'll just have to force you and let you remember everything. She would say, as her arm would explode, turning into ice, as ice would basically appear right in front of him, creating a large pillar that seems to be, you know, pretty sharp. As Izuku would basically dodge it away, as Izuku would say this, Hey, Lumine! As Lumine would say this, uh, right. As she would basically grab her sword, as she would start fighting, you know, 
last Yara with her sword. You know, basically, you know, reaching towards her, you know, or more specifically, you know, last Yara's, you know, I guess to say, I guess you could say, like, chest area. Not that specific chest area. As, you know, she's currently, you know, um, getting ready to slice her, she would basically dodge out of the way, and would create a little barrier made out of, you know, ice. As easy could say this. Well, guess I'll just have to use this. As his arms would start, you know, stretch, would start to stretch out, as his arm would start to create a large pyro-like hand, similar to the, you know, similar to, you know, you know, um, Itaki Susano. Wait for a second. As the Susano-like arm would start shooting out fireballs, as it would cause the, you know, the large, you know, I guess you could say wall of ice would basically to disappear. As when it disappears, nobody was there. As La Signora would basically come up, up, like basically come up to, you know, come up to him. As she would say this, my lovely Rostam, come to me. She would basically say, as Bell would basically dodge out of the way again, as you would say, there's no way I'm not your Rostam. And by the way, why do you keep calling me that? As she would say this, is it that obvious? You're my Rostam. Nobody, nobody is ever gonna take that away from me. Not even her. As after saying that with the stain, she would create a little cryo sword. Add her cryo like, you know, I guess you could say catalyst, which is, you know, what she, you know, I guess you could say, you know, sort of, you know, that's basically her weapon. She's basically a catalyst user, but either way, she would basically create a sword made of ice, and she would charge towards Bell, as Bell would basically, you know, use his brand newly acquired, you know, Hellfire Science to basically, you know, block the attack. As Izuku would start creating, you know, you know, starts coating the flames, you know, basically start, you know, coating the, you know, sides of the flames, or more specifically, in pyro energy. As he would start fighting her once again with this, you know, Bradley enhanced, you know, sides, basically slashing them around, similar to a Kasari Gama. But after a while, she would start to, you know, submit, as she would be flown all the way towards the back. After, you know, Raiden Shogun sees this, she would say, uh, How disappointing. And she would basically say this. Now, Izuki Midoriya. And she would say this. I bet she would say this. What do you want? And she would say this. Well, isn't that obvious? I'm gonna be taking, but before she can say anything else, a burst of fire would basically, you know, would surround the entire area where, you know, La Senora used to be. As after that happened, Izuku and Lumine would basically be, you know, jumping back. Jumping back towards, you know, near the entrance of where they first, you know, came into the, you know, large throne room. As after jumping back, they would basically, you know, after, you know, shielding their eyes, they would look towards the area. As Raiden Shogun would just look back and look at, you know, La Senora. Or at least, what's left of her. La Senora was almost, like, literally turned into a flaming, fiery mess, almost resembling a moth. Her eyes were covered by a flaming mask that resembles a masquerade-like mask, but, you know, without the eye holes. As she seems to be glaring at, you know, me mostly. <coughs> Sorry about that. As several butterflies made from fire seem to be surrounding her, as she would say this, you will pay, you will pay for corrupting, for corrupting my Rostam, she would basically say, as a sword made of fire would basically appear in her hands, as she would charge towards, you know, me, as Bell would say this, no, after saying that, he would start to change his arms, or more specifically, you know, Susano like arms, sorry about that, god dang it, uh, for a second guys, As the Sasano like arms would start gaining skin, and then slowly armor, and then almost resemble a large ass. You know, full ass Sasano, but not as big. Maybe about the size of a ruined guardian. Kind of, maybe. So, after this happens, Izuku would basically, you know, push back La Senora. After that, La Senora would look over and would see Izuku basically covered in Sasano. The full size Susano, or more specifically the final form of Susano, like the whole Tengu feel of it. 
as it seems to be half fiery and half electric -y, if you call those words. Uh, anyway, so, after doing this, as you can see this, I'm not letting you touch her. You have to go through me. After saying this, a large scythe made of firewood basically appeared in one hand, and, and the other hand seems to be, you know, a large spear made of electro energy. God dang it! Uh, so, after you know basically blocking her attack, you can say this. If you want to hurt her, then you have to go through me. After saying this, the wings would basically appear, which instead of being just two, instead there's, you know, he has two sets of wings. One in the back and one, you know, like, you know, his, like, you know, um, near his, like, you know, on top of his, I guess you can say, like, you know, his waist back, or I guess you can say that. After doing those, after doing that, his eyes would start burning, almost resembling electricity and fire. And so, before anything else, you know, we basically end up the episode right there. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be ending it right there because, you know, I sort of have, you know, a bit of a, you know, problem right now. More specifically, I want all of you guys to subscribe, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I do usually end this video off with just doing like my whole like, I hope you like the video, comment, and subscribe thing. But you know, um, I just hope you guys subscribe to my channel because you know, I like all of these subscribers. But you know, um, it's not really that important all that much. But I would appreciate it, okay? Anyway, so anyway, I hope you like the video, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye.